Mother of Christians, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today in the Gospel, we hear one of our Lord's more remarkable comments, one that uh, at first hearing might even be a little bit shocking, knowing that his mother is standing outside the door. He says, who is my mother? And we think to his audience that's before him, that might be almost like a repudiation. And yet, what our Lord is really saying is that, first of all, the real relationship with him that really counts isn't the blood relation. He doesn't deny it, nor is he saying it's worthless. But he's saying the relation of lasting value is that spiritual relationship based on charity, which is the will of his heavenly Father, the real uh, spiritual familiarity or relationship. And of course, defining uh, relationship with him in that way, he is acknowledging that his mother is truly united in the will of God the Father. She's the perfect, the most perfect creature who never was not in grace, who, who never opposed the will of God, who always sought and did the will of the Heavenly Father. And this truth, then, is the key to all uh, human peace and harmony. The Mass that we're celebrating today, the prayers, the collect, and prayer over the gifts, the final prayer, are selected from a Mass for harmony. And it's um, one of the Masses that can be offered for the Church. But I selected this also because it can be used for the needs of civil society. Right now we're also praying here in the chapel during our holy hour, uh, the novena for peace that the Knights of Columbus uh, asked their members to pray in response to the unrest that we see taking place in our country, unrest that uh, has turned murderous and is extremely dangerous for the welfare of our country. And so we pray for peace and we pray for harmony. And that harmony that we seek has no natural origin. It can't be found in the Constitution even if that Constitution is properly interpreted and respected, uh, it, the Constitution properly interpreted and respected in the light of Christian truth can help. It can establish conditions that make it possible or that favor. But in and of itself, that won't bring about harmony. The real harmony is that harmony that comes from doing the will of God our Heavenly Father. If we want to be at peace with our brothers and sisters, truly respect the relationship that we have with every other human being, we first of all have to be oriented toward our common Father, the Creator in Heaven. And so that's what our Lord calls us to. And here in the church, we have the fullness of the truth that saves. And as members also of civil society, we have to acknowledge and practice the truth that we've been given that supersedes 
human laws that supersedes uh, human respect and the natural impulses we all have toward, uh, for instance, well, it's, it's a disordered thing, but revenge when we're wronged. Uh, the Christian faith is that we have to forgive. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. And so the cycle of injustice and violence that's been loosed will only be resolved in the mercy of God and the only way that we will uh, be of any use to our country is to practice our Christian faith to be united uh, with one another through Christ and through his mother she is the mother of unity so as we pray for peace and harmony uh, let's not be deceived by the arguments of um, civil society today and the law of men today, which would exclude God, which would say that uh, man determines right and wrong. That's not true. We have to be, first of all, Christians. The Constitution is a, is a document to be respected and to be protected, but it's not sacred. There's only one sacred truth, and that's the truth that we've been given in Christ through the church. And so the Constitution has to be, if, for, for Christians, the Constitution has to be uh, subordinate to the truth that we have in God. There is no truth outside of God. And we have to affirm this. I, I believe strongly that if we're going to be good Americans, we have to first be good Christians and be faithful first and foremost to God. And then in that fraternal charity that we'll have, that true Christian love, we can help our brothers and sisters uh, come to God and rebuild a nation of peace and justice. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, our mother, help bring this about and protect us in this time of strife. Praise be Jesus and Mary.